This is a piece of what we do. African sons and the ring shout, ecstatic singing and dancing, an invitation to spirit. South of the equator, counterclockwise movement, calling and responding, and playing instruments of rhythms and strings that would later become banjos and violins and drums, directed at gods and ancestors. Circle and tempo quickening with each revolution, mirroring the interchange between the living and the dead. Dead whispering in the ears of those in the sacred circle, blessed be the ties that bind. Triangle of trade. Soft name for terrible crimes of purchase and commerce, singing to the ancestors and each other in the bellies of those boats, wondering if the gods are still listening. Different languages, different shades, different customs, same fear, same grief, same loss, forced bonds of kinship creating transatlantic communities. Middle Atlantic passage improvisation, conceived on salty waters, and born in American soil. Whispered between betrayed tribes people, all different, now reduced to all the same. Forced to dance on ships to keep their bodies strong and then on land to bring the best price. Forced to sing in port by slave traders and auctioneers to restrict conversation and bonding and insurrection. Muscle and bone worth more than guts and spirit, which lays dormant but not dead, waiting for the right moment to rise up. Dateline, 600 Virginia. Captors notice as early as the arrival of the first slave ships the odd form of musical communication among the chattel. First verse called out by the leader and the lonely chorus response returned by the group. Dogs in the night. Blessed be the ties that bind. Make a noise, they bellow. Who would have ever thought that singing would have become a primitive GPS locator for overseers in the field? Might as well be a shout, a moan, a field hollow. All called, all responded, all worked productively in rhythm. The cadence keeps the mind active and transcends time and place into a joyful one. African farming as well as religious songs of the motherland now mesh with one another on new land to fight off the hole in the heart. Sing to remind us of home. Sing to withstand hardship. Sing to express anger, frustration creatively or to complain covertly. 
a melodious secret rebellion. Muscles tense, the mind steals, but the soul flies free, if just for a momentary flash. Ancient song calls out across fields and swamps and hollows about a life not forgotten rewoven and relied on to express feelings of rootlessness and misery and to create community among their fellow enslaved people, reaching back in song to African gods and ancestors with a musical prayer of syncopation and deliverance. Dateline. From the beginning of captivity, slave masters imposed Christian conversion on their property because it's not enough to own the body. You need to control the mind. You must monitor the soul, even if these creatures have none. Along with the enslaved, the ring shout makes the trip across the Atlantic. Slave Christianity emerges a melange of African earth-centered voodoo and Christian beliefs to pacify slave owners. Blessed be the ties that bind. 1700. Port de New Orleans, Congo Square, pulse of excitement, where in their limited freedom, enslaved Africans are allowed to congregate, a city owned by Spanish and French Catholics with lax attitudes about religion, willing to sacrifice Sunday afternoons for burning off some steam. Energetic black men invite dignified black women into the circle to dance. White men watch from the sidelines lustfully, wear yourself out with song and socializing today, then we don't fear your work the voodoo tonight in the woods. And simultaneously, on the master's farm, all throughout the American South, peaking from verandas, property owners hear lively music, played in free time by slaves, graceful, organic, partnered line dances intertwine around slave quarters reminiscent of owners' more restricted ballroom dances. The bambola, they call it. Bambola morphs into cakewalk and travels from black feet to white feet, plantation to plantation, and city to city. Oh, the joy of quiet subterfuge. Imagine the muffled laughter in the darkness of the slave quarters at night, bowing low, doffing hats, arrogant high-stepping promenade based on a white cotillion. Never would property owners have guessed that they were the inspiration for some, uh, such absurdly animated coupling. Very small remuneration, but just the same. Dateline, 1800s. The revolution of industry wages war on the spirit. Cotton gins rise up out of the fields like weeds. Through the leasing and renting of slaves from plantation to plantation, a cultural cross-pollination begins. Bye. Bye. 
my black butt Well, somebody waits for me Sugar so sweet and so is she My So late some night, like bird, bye bye. I said, like Thank you. In the 1830s, the first original American art form took the country like a house of fire. It started when Tom D. Rice, a white song and dance man, overheard an old black man with a bum leg dressed in ragged clothes working and singing the popular slave song, Jump Jim Crow. And recognizing the potential, he adds it to his act. Pretty soon, white entertainers everywhere jump on the Jim Crow bandwagon with burnt cork faces, raggedy costume, affected speech and movement to perform plantation music and comedy. So the coon song is born and begets its demented offspring, blackface minstrelsy. By 1840, slaves begin giving performances in their private time to make extra money to buy their freedom or that of their family members. Success for black performers required that they also cork up their faces. However, a person can only play at so much of your basic slapstick, wisecracking, Tom Show nonsense about the wonders of care and carefree existence of plantation life before a modification is called for. Quickly, the look and sound of minstrelsy shift in wise and capable hands to owning art and identity through subtle alterations of black stereotypes while poking fun at double standards of white society and their perception of black Americans, at the same time championing the abolitionist movement. Not such quiet subterfuge this time. Dateline, 1865, end of the Civil War. Four million displaced black refugees and suddenly more freedom of movement creating the beginning of plantation immigration and the intermingling of black and brown cultures and communities. Blessed be the ties that bind. Made from a stew of African music, Christian hymns, and American folk songs around the 1860s, the blues gets noticed. Passed down through oral tradition, this music had lived in every note and cry from that first West African slave transport. Blues evolved from an unaccompanied vocal music of poor black laborers, rendered in a call and response style, and expanded into songs seasoned with emotional content. Blues, like its non-secular ancestor, the spiritual, when sung or heard, is an act of healing and resistance, a safe catch and release to lay your burden down and feel less alone. About 1885, the Baptist Church reorganized themselves. No longer would slave Christianity or talk of sanctification be tolerated. Many preachers and congregants took their uninhibited, ring-shouting ways and created the black sanctified church hallelujah. African religion may have been lost, but what flourished was the African tradition of musical, social, spiritual synthesis. And the strong bond between singing and movement. Storefront by day, dance hall by night, and church on Sunday morning, Lord have mercy, 
shared space to make up for scarcity of resources. Take funky butt haul from bumpin' and grindin' to fancy hats and paper fans, testifying and signifying, and the saints come marching in. <clears throat> Dateline, 1890, Great Migration. American blacks move like a swarm of honeybees from the rural south to the urban north, prompted by the growing violence and oppression of Jim Crow laws and for greater job opportunities in the north and midwest. With them goes the culture they have developed for 300 years, including country blues, folk and slave music, and spirituals, which infest cities all over the US. Blessed be the ties that bind. After the Civil War comes and goes, among the souvenirs are abandoned brass wartime instruments cast aside, dented, dusty, and forgotten horns that once bellowed justification of cash war, land war, flesh war, now lay as tarnished reminders of loss. Uneducated ex-slaves shine them up and blow them up like nobody's business for the first time in some time. Sousa, the March King, gets a swing in his step and syncopation in his jig, whether he likes it or not. A collision of non-traditional brass, all earthy and metallic, rises up from the body like the stench of the dead in a wail of uncompromising freedom. And in the dark corners of brothels, saloons, and bars in colored red light districts, typically waits an old upright piano longing to be resurrected. Ex-slave learn not to play formally, but from their self-taught peers, improvising ragged rhythms. These musicians, along with post-war brass players and free blacks, educated with European musical training, conceived, played, and popularized ragtime in New Orleans and St. Louis. A musical tree shot upward, and from the branches sprouted son of a slave, Scott Joplin, who became known as the king of ragtime. His 1899 maple leaf rag changed the worldwide face of popular culture and cradled the winged seed of what was to come. There is a connecting thread of art and music that weaves us together on a global level even if we choose to believe that we are forever isolated and different in the warp and weft of our collective culture. It outlives and outlasts shame, defensiveness, and regret. And while nothing can justify the crimes of our past, we disrespect history and humanity if we discount the creation that bravely rises from the sacred ashes of adversity, coping, and chaos. So now we begin. Blessed be the ties that bind. good without you. Take my lips, I want to lose them. Take these arms, I never use them more. Your goodbye left me with eyes that cry. How can I Go on, dear, without you. You took the part that once was my heart. So why not take a love me?
can I go on, dear, without you? You took the best, so why not take the rest, so baby? 